everyone. Today we'll be starting on a new module called Moving About. In Moving About, we'll be learning about various different ways of describing motion. Uh, we'll be learning about uh, what we mean by position, velocity, time, acceleration, forces, momentum, energy, work, and so on. Uh, we'll also be covering some safety devices that are used to prevent us from experiencing dangerous amounts of motion. We'll start off with measuring motion. And so in this topic, we'll be learning about various ways that we can measure motion and what quantities we need to be able to describe something's motion. Here we can see a toy in motion, Newton's cradle. So why bother? Well, transportation is vital to our society. We can see some uh, buses over here. Uh, physical laws, uh, that is, ways that we describe the way that nature works, provide a description of how vehicles behave. Uh, some important parameters for describing motion are speed, distance, and time, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Now, motion occurs when an object changes its position in a certain amount of time. So, when a bird's flying, or when a person's walking, or when a car is traveling along the road. Uh, and to measure speed and position, we need a frame of reference. Uh, so positions and speeds are often measured as vectors. We'll learn a little about what vectors are later on. Now there are a number of different devices that can be used to measure distance and time. We could use a ruler and a stopwatch. We could use a ticker timer, which you probably have at your school laboratory. We could use a multi-flash photography. Or we could use an electronic data logger. Uh, so now let's take a look at each one of these uh, various devices in, um, in a little more detail. So a ruler and stopwatch. A stopwatch can be used to measure long intervals of time. All the other uh, various things that we'll be looking at uh, will only be measuring short amounts of time in the sort of ballpark of about 10 or 20 seconds. Uh, a stopwatch, because it can measure uh, times as long as minutes or hours, is good for measuring objects that move for a long time. And so it becomes inaccurate when it's used to time very small intervals because you can't press the button fast enough. Uh, so that might be used for measuring athletes as they run around a track or measuring how long it takes for a car to get uh, from one place to another. Now a ticket timer consists of a hammer, which we can see at the top of the picture here, uh, marking a piece, of uh, a piece of ticker tape at about 50 strikes per second, so it just sort of goes up, down, and leaves a little dot every time it does. Now as the tape is pulled through the ticket timer, the hammer leaves a sort of record of its, mo uh, of its movement by leaving dots on the paper. And the distance between the dots on the ticker tape indicate exactly how fast the tape was moving when it was moving through the ticker timer. This might be useful for measuring small things that can pull ticker timer through, like a toy car or an object falling off a table. Uh, Multi-flash photography uses a strobe light, so a light that blinks rapidly, uh, to capture a series of images with a single photograph. So we can see here, multi-flash photography has been used to uh, photograph a golfer swimming, swinging a club. Uh, a photograph like this can be analyzed in the same way as a ticket timer record. So just like for a ticket timer, uh, when the various images are further away, the object was moving faster. Uh, an electronic data logger uses a light sensor to determine when objects move past it. Uh, and because you know the length of the object that you want to measure, you can find its speed simply uh, by figuring out how far it's gone the distance it will travel b between the times that the data log picks it up will be equal to the distance it's traveled. This concludes the theory. We have covered uh, four different ways of measuring uh, distance and time, as well as the, what the importance is of actually measuring motion. Now let's go on to some questions. Question one. Which set of equipment could best measure the average speed of a runner in its sports carnival? Well, let's look at the options. An electronic data logger probably wouldn't be too great. I mean, it could measure the athlete, uh, the speed of the athlete at one position, but it wouldn't be able to measure the whole race. So it's not the greatest idea. A ticket timer? Well, it would be impractical because you'd need a very, very long piece of ticker tape. Uh, and you'd have to count the whole number of dots to, in, our, in order to calculate the average speed. You'd have to look at the entire length of the ticket tape and figure out how long it took for it to go through. Uh, multi-flash photography. Um, it would be a little more practical than a ticket timer because you wouldn't need a piece of tape so long. 
uh, but it would make counting the images of the athlete rather difficult, and you'd have to count how many strobes there were in order to calculate the average speed. And so the best way would be with a ruler and stopwatch. Now, a stopwatch is the best way to measure long distances of time. So uh, a runner in a sports carnival could take anywhere from you know, a minute to uh, 10 minutes, depending on the length of the race. And so a stopwatch is the only one of these which is sort of practical for measuring that length of time. Question two. A slow-moving object speeds up as it pulls a piece of ticket tape through a ticket timer. What does the resulting pattern on the tape look like? Well, let's take a look at some of the options that we have. A. The dots on the tape are all very close together. Now, if they were all very close together, it means that the ticket tape would be moving through the ticket timer quite slowly at a constant speed. And as we can see, that's not what the motion looks like, so A can't be right. B. The dots on the tape are all very far apart. Uh, in this case, uh, it, the object pulling the tape through the ticket timer would be moving at constant speed, but moving very fast instead of very slow. So this isn't the right answer either. D, the dots start out far apart, but get close together. Now, dots far apart means the object is moving fast. Dots close together mean that the object is moving slow. If the dots start out far apart and get close together, it means that the object started out fast and then slowed down, which is the opposite of what we see the motion actually was. Our last option is C, the dots start out close together and get further and further apart. And so starting out close together, means that the object starts slow, exactly what we want. And getting further apart means the object is getting faster, also exactly what we want. So C must be the correct answer. Question three. Describe with words the motion of the object pulling this ticker tape through a ticker timer. Well, let's take a look at the dots on the piece of tape. The first few dots are quite far apart. So that means that the object was initially moving quite quickly through the ticket timer. As we progress along the tape, the dots get quite close together. And finally, at the end of the tape, they're far apart again. So this means that the object must sort of slow down the middle and then get faster. And so putting this down in words, we have something like this. The object pulling the tape starts fast, then slows down, and then speeds up again. This concludes the questions. Uh, in this topic, we've covered uh, the various different ways we can measure motion with various different devices, as well as the importance for measuring motion in our society.